All right, so we're out at a field. That's a parking lot over there, but over here is a field, and we're gonna use a landing pad to take off in the grass safely and also hopefully land on that landing pad safely. So we have our Mini 2, we have our uh, remote control hooked up to our phone. We're gonna bring up the app, power everything on, and we're gonna calibrate that compass because if you recall last time, we had a compass calibration error message. We're gonna make sure everything is calibrated this time around. Here we go. Power on the remote, so short and long press. Power on the drone, short and then long press. Now that we powered everything on, it says go fly, which means we are successfully bound again as we did before. We're gonna hit go fly and it says take off is permitted, which is great. Uh, the only thing is we wanna make sure that compass is indeed calibrated. It wasn't before, no surprise, because we were around a bunch of metal stuff. But even out here, let's just go ahead and do it for the first time. On the upper right of the menu, we're gonna go ahead and hit those three little dots, bring up our safety menu, scroll up a little bit or down, whatever way, and then compass calibration. Now it says compass is normal, and I believe it, but we're gonna calibrate it just in case in the future you run into an issue. Calibrate and hit start, and it's gonna say rotate aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. Now what I'm gonna do is walk around like this where my body is pretty much orbiting the drone. Once I make a full rotation, it wants me to rotate it vertically. So I'm gonna point it upward and do the same thing. So it's one way with the drone horizontally and then one way pointed vertically. And calibration successful. Now if you see in the app right now, you'll see that the clouds look a little strange. They have a little zebra pattern on them. That's the overexposure warning. And, and the, the, the drone is saying, hey, those clouds are really, really bright consider lowering your uh, exposure. Well, I'm not going to because I'm auto exposed and by the way, the sun keeps going behind the clouds. So we're gonna roll with it. Now the first time you power on the drone and try and fly, it's gonna ask you if you wanna do a pre-flight tutorial. And these are some really good uh, pre-flight checks that we can go through to uh, make sure that we're gonna have a successful first flight. We've gone through a few of these already, like take off in an open, uncrowded area, turn up your phone volume to hear voice prompts and that type of thing, ensure your battery is above a certain level. Um, if we start the pre-flight check, we can also see that yes, we removed our gimbal cover earlier. Also things like checking to ensure the aircraft is placed, um, you know, so that we're behind it and we're facing the rear of it so that its left is our left and its right is our right for orientation purposes, that type of thing. And it's also gonna talk through um, the, uh, the takeoff process. So on the left side of the app, we have a little takeoff icon. And if we tap that, and then it says auto takeoff, this aircraft automatically will take off to an altitude of 1.2 meters. So we're gonna hold that takeoff button. And sure enough, it took off. And it'll hover here until it's out of battery unless we tell it to do something else. So that's the beauty of DJI products and these intelligent drones. You don't have to do anything. If you run into problems, take your thumb off the stick. See, I'm not even doing anything and it's just hovering. That's why these are so crash proof it seems sometimes, or like, you know, any beginner can really jump in and do it because it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to take off for your first time. And it's gonna say, ascend one meter. So your left thumb stick, we want to push that up to ascend one meter. So here we go, we ascend one meter, and there we go, and now it says descend one meter. So we're pressing our left thumb stick down. It wants us to turn left, so with the same thumb stick, we're gonna create a yaw to the left. and turn right. With the right thumbstick now, we're gonna be pushing forward to go forward. There we go, all right. Now we're gonna go backward, fly backward. So that's up 
is forward on the right thumbstick, down is backward on the right thumbstick. And then translate left, so it's gonna be moving through space to the left and to the right. So, with the right thumbstick, we're gonna be pushing it to the left. And with the right thumbstick, we're gonna be pushing it to the right. And you can imagine if the drone was facing you like it is right now, if I were to try and go right, it would move left. And that's very disorienting, especially if you're trying to fly back to yourself. So that's why they suggest that you instead have it face away from you. And that way, the drone's left is your left, and the drone's right is your right. So we're gonna spin this around again and keep it pointed away from us. That's a lot easier. So now what we wanna do is land. Um, we're gonna go on the left side, it says, tap here to open the return to home window. So we're gonna tap on that. So the aircraft will ascend to a specified altitude and return to the home point. And ensure there are no tall buildings or obstacles in the way. Hit OK, and the aircraft will land in its current location. Ensure the landing area is level and free of obstacles. Abort landing in the event of an emergency. So if you're landing in a spot you don't want to, abort. So we're gonna hit OK. Now, we, we've kind of bypassed the return to home part because we're so low. There's no point in shooting up just to come back a foot or two away. So we're gonna use our right thumbstick to maneuver the drone above our landing spot. For this, all we really need is our right thumbstick. So we're going to be maneuvering, so moving back a little bit and a little bit left to get it above our landing pad. A little bit more, that's, that's pretty good. Now we can go ahead and tap that land or hold that land button on the app and it should land right where it's at. We can continue to fine tune that landing with our right thumbstick until it lands perfectly on it. Oh, you get a little chime. It says, congratulations on completing the tutorial. Hey! The other way to take off, if you care to do so, is to uh, use the sticks in tandem and you take your left thumb and push it down to the left and then your right thumb down to the right simultaneously. You do that together and the props will spin up it won't take off, but it'll start spinning. And then all you gotta do is throttle up with your left stick. Now we see all these uh, zebra lines. I'm gonna turn those off because they're a little distracting for the tutorial. Uh, if you go into the upper right with the three dots, you can go into your camera tab and then just turn off overexposure warning. Makes it a little bit easier for this tutorial. See that little dial right there? You move that back and forth with your index finger and that is how you control the gimbal tilt of your camera. So, by pressing that one way or the other, rolling it one way or the other, I should say, that's how you control the pitch of your gimbal. If you go into your gimbal settings, basically you go into your main app settings and then go into control. Under gimbal, you can allow upward gimbal rotation, which means you can raise your gimbal even higher than normal. So if we do that, we can use our little gimbal tilt dial there to go much higher than normal. And I, I don't think there's usually a reason why I would ever turn that feature off. I, I usually always have upward gimbal rotation allowed. I'm gonna go ahead and fly the drone up a little bit higher. I'm gonna get to about 50 feet. And I can tell that by looking at the left, the bottom left of the app. It says H for height and D for distance. D is how far away horizontally from the landing pad or from where it took off, the drone is. H is for how high above that le elevation of, of takeoff the drone is currently. So also you can see uh, miles per hour or if you've set it to metric kilometers per hour, how fast the drone is going, either vertically or horizontally. Now on the radio on the right, you can see that the, here are your uh, record buttons or your shutter button. So uh, if you want to actually physically press a button to start recording or to stop recording or to take a picture if, if you're in photo mode, you can press that button. Also, on the front, you see your flight mode switch here. This can go from either 
your cinematic, or they used to be called it tripod mode, which kind of deadens the controls a little bit, slows things down, gets a, maybe a more smooth shot if you're looking for something nice and smooth, or normal, which is how you should take off and then land in, and you know, that's, that's normal. Or you go into sport mode, which is the fastest mode, really unlocks those motors, and uh, you get your top speed out of it. However, just be careful, because it's gonna go fast. You see on the upper right, we have 69% battery left. We also have 18 minutes and 51 seconds of flight left. Um, so that just means that in 18 minutes and 50 seconds, we're gonna be at critically low battery. And to make sure to fly back and be back home, back in your landing spot before that countdown. On the bottom left, even further left than your height and your distance indicators is your GPS. We're gonna tap that, brings up a little mini map. We can tap it again it full screens it, and this shows exactly where we are. We can see that H stands for home. We can pinch in to expand that view. And we can see that we really haven't traveled very far, but that's the parking lot behind us. Um, then the H is uh, home, and that's pretty much where I'm standing. The blue indicator is me. And then the uh, little uh, paper airplane uh, icon, that's where the drone is. I'm gonna yaw it around, you can see that that's where it's pointed, the red line indicates um, the shortest distance back. And then the blue line indicates where it's traveled. So as I fly it around a little bit, it creates a history of where it flew using GPS. That red line is helpful just in case you, you, know, you lose orientation a little bit. You can use the, the, the GPS map to yaw the drone to point down that red line and then press forward to follow that red line back. And sure enough, I fly right back to myself. You can change your home point. You can change a few other things around here, but basically home is right there where we took off. Really easy to orient yourself. And then just tap back on the live view to bring back up your main flying uh, apps. You can see where you're flying uh, with, your, with, with your video feed. I'm gonna record on this and I'm gonna do a few little stick movements. Now in this particular movement, what I'm gonna be doing is pressing left with my left thumb stick to create a yaw. I'll be pressing forward with my right stick to move forward and that's gonna create a nice little smooth turn to the left. Once I come around to show the parking lot, and myself, there I am, I'm gonna stop yawing and just moving forward. Now I'm going to yaw to the right as I move forward and tilt my gimbal up with my left index finger on that dial just a little bit. Just see a little more of the sky. I'm gonna raise up with my left thumbstick to ascend. Now I'm gonna tilt down with my index finger on the dial. to show the parking lot. And now yaw to the right as I continue to move forward. And then I'm going to tilt my camera back up, straighten out, and look at the horizon. Now I'm gonna stop, and that's just letting my hands off the thumbsticks. I'm not doing anything at the moment. And I'm going to tilt all the way down with that gimbal. Yaw a little bit to the right to do a turn. Move forward just a little bit. Stop yawing and gonna get above my landing pad here. Right there, that's my landing pad, that's me. That's an easy way to find out exactly where I am if I want to land really quickly or something. Tilt down and see where I'm at, make sure there's no obstacles and I'm landing really where I think I am. You can't really see the app very well with sunglasses on, but you need sunglasses to see the drone up there, so it's kind of going back and forth with the sunglasses. Now, if you have some sort of uh, mode, like a automatic mode that you're in for some reason, you're, you don't like what you're seeing, you think you're about to head to danger, you can pause it by briefly hitting the pause button there. The pause button also acts as return to home, and what you do there is you hold return to home. Once it enters return to home, 
it'll ascend up to 180 feet like we told it to. You see on the bottom left, H for height goes up to roughly 180. And then it's going to fly back using GPS back to the home space. All right, it found us, it's landing. You can tilt down with that camera to see exactly where it's landing and it looks like it's spot on on my landing pad, that's awesome. It's kind of missing it, so what I'm gonna do with my stick, I'm gonna get it right over it. So, yes, it was going to miss it by a few feet. It's not perfect, but you can help it out a little bit. Now, if I was landing in the parking lot or something, that wouldn't have been a big deal. Um, that small landing pad, it's a tall order for a GPS device to land on, but anyway, I had to help it out a little bit by just using my right thumbstick to kind of edge it toward it a little bit. So honestly, I never try to get the battery drained past 20%, um, 15% like bare, bare minimum, but I don't like to, I don't like to, you know, test my luck. I, I'd rather land uh, before my battery's completely out and then pick up another battery if I have one. Um, but yeah, if you're flying over water or over a big forest or something, something where it'd be difficult to, to find your drone again, then yeah, I would suggest don't let your battery run too low. That's where most people get into problems. Um, they, just, they just test the life of their battery and they test distance and, and, and stuff like that and then they lose their drone or something. So yeah, just be careful. Anyway, thank you so much for watching everybody. Um, I know it's been a little while since I made a video on YouTube, but I'm hoping to get back in the swing of things. I've been wanting to make this video for a while with the Mini 2. Um, check the links in the video description to the Mini 2, um, as well as the DJI Care Refresh plan, um, the landing pad, anything else you might need to get going. Um, I love DJI products. I'm sure most of you do as well. That's why you're watching this video, and I hope this was helpful. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Until next time, happy flying.